by Mohamed Wilkerson. Yeah, I'm recording. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. What's up, YouTube? Cheers and welcome to the first fantasy rap league. My name is Bruce Lively, representing Team Box Cutter. And it's your boy Josh over here, representing All G's React. Okay, so week nine. We're in week nine after a, a interesting, interesting, um, what do you call that, bye week, okay, for Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. We took the week off. It was a bye week for both teams to get resituated, right, get back on that field, do a couple drills, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and we got Mick Jenkins. On Team Box Cut Aside versus Cool G Rap on All G's React side. You guys chose. We had a live, you know how it is, live fantasy pick. Mick Jenkins' song that we chose was Martyrs. A good one. And uh, Cool G Rap, tell him what you had. Uh, you guys picked It's a Shame by Cool G Rap. A good one. Another good one. So, I believe this one might just be close. Um, every time you hear this sound, that basically means points for that person or whatever we're talking about because roll scrolling underneath, you have the categories and what you're awarded points for so you can be on, in one accord with us and know what we're actually scoring. So listen out for that sound and that lets you know where your artist is in the scoring. With that being said, with that being said, you got you ready to do this, man? It's been man, a week later, and uh, I'm ready Woo. to get back into the fantasy. I know you guys got to climb. You got the rest of the season to climb back from six and two. Yep. Yeah, let me get my stretching going real quick. Let me stretch real quick. Oh, okay. Man. All right. Ah. Okay. Ready for that hard hitting action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to start with Mick Jenkins and Martyrs. Yeah. Let me stop right there before anything else. Now, you see the imagery immediately, right? Yeah. Now he's got his shirt. Off. Starting off, he's got his shirt off. Let's talk about the first part, first piece of the imagery. He's from Chicago, for those who don't know. And he is directly linking that to Chief Keith and the string of raps that was coming out around the same time, 2016 area, where everybody was in their grandma's house, jumping around with no shirt on, no shirt on, and uh, the chain. Um, drill. Drill it. That drill trap. That's drill, that drill music. trap. Straight up drill music. Instead, he's got a new song, but, but imports the same imagery so you know exactly who he's talking to and what he's talking about. To me, that's already fire. Number two, even the colors of it, of it is the same. Like, he use the same filter and the same camera. It's kind of dark. It's gray. Uh, yeah. Inside of a, a all-white background house wall and a bunch of dudes are looking around standing with no shirts on and that was the the principal imagery of Chief Keef and the whole drill music uh, thing now number two the music that is Nina Simone with a song called Strange Fruit came out in the 60s uh, I believe it was the 60s early 60s where it was she actually sang that black pianist, jazz pianist, sang that in front of an all-white audience in America called Strange Fruit, talking about Negroes being hung from trees. Just That's a nice sample pick. Right. Just think about that. While he's wearing the noose, he's showing you who he's talking about. Music hasn't even started yet, and the conversation is roaring. 
that that is a, a a great use of the musicality, like sample pick and um, video, you know, visual content, visual creativity. Check out that Nina Simone, people. Don't sleep on Strange Fruit. All right, you ready? Let's go. I can't remember who he was. Whoa. Stop. Uh, let's talk about I'm just with my niggas hanging. <laughs> While he's putting the rope up, hanging on for dear life. Right? Talk about how he'd rather hang in the gallows than do the, the crazy things that people do for the money. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. And then he shows that guy right there. You say you don't know who he is. I can't remember who he is either. Man, it was an interview back in like, uh, man, if I think right around 2015, maybe 14, that kind of went viral. Because I think he was like one of the youngest dudes in like a maximum uh, security prison. Uh-huh. I know bits and pieces of it. I just don't remember the exact thing. And they was interviewing him like about how he got there, you know, and all that type of stuff. I just can't remember the whole thing. But that circled around like around 2014, 2015. Because mm. he was, he's real young. And he's in there with all the murderers, rapists, and killers. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. at that young age. Wow, and man. They, they were trying to get a sense of like what caused you to do this. And you can kind of just see it. Even in that little clip they show and they kind of can see like that's what it's like when your back is up against the wall for real and you don't have nobody or have nothing. Yeah, nothing. You, yeah, you, nothing. Me? you just, yeah, you, you, you have no real rationale when you're at that point. And that age, like. He he right. he almost laughed when they asked why you killed a guy. It was like who cares why? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To him, he's like, he's laughing like, what do you mean why? Wow. Like, there's no rationale to why you took somebody's life. Oh you know what man, I mean? I'm just with my niggas hanging, boy. We hanging ourselves. How many different yep. metaphors can he pull out of it? How many times did he change his style up too in one verse? How many different rhymes? Did rhyme schemes did he use? And in between a, a longer rhyme scheme, he threw up three other different rhyme schemes in there and then rhymed it at the end. Like, I can't even remember all the different words right now. Dude was kind of sick with it on that verse, man. I got man. all kinds of points going. We, 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 man, man. Let's Ooh. go, man. Okay. Uh, what you got? That was, that's it? Yeah, that's it. All right, let's go. Yeah, I like how he's using the hanging part. Hanging on for dear life. Like how some people are just hanging on for dear life themselves. Yes. Just trying to make it, just trying to make something. And then you got some people who hanging themselves. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it's dope. I wow. like that. That's I really crazy. Do. I the, like that. The amount of different ways he used that hanging, man. And it's called Martyrs. So, I mean, let's talk about the Nina Simone, Strange Fruit, uh, the position that you're in when you're like this guy, or you're just yep. when you come from where he comes from, just hanging with his boys, hanging on for dear life, as well right. as hanging yourself for the love of the money. Yep. There's so many things involved in this. It's, it's deep. It's deep and it's complex. It's an issue that you can't just shrug aside and say, well, this is what it is and this is what it isn't. And I love that because you can't just say, well, he's just preaching or he's just doing this. 
he's really kind of encapsulating every side, every angle to this, <laughs> to, to the story that he's trying right. to tell. I love it. Yeah, he's sitting there letting you know from, like, you got some, like, basically he's saying, so you put a circle around the situation, the people within it, right? He's saying, they're all in it together, but you got some who's hanging themselves, who's also hanging with others who are trying to hang on for dear life, who's not trying to hang themselves. Yeah. He's saying it's all mixed. It's you know what I'm saying? He's saying up. every single bit of it is mixed. Welcome, you know? welcome to my life, <laughs> is what he's saying. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to our life. Yeah. Welcome to the other side. Take a look. He's holding up a mirror. I love it. Woo. All right. All right. That you know was what Mick time Jenkins. time it is. Now it's time for the OG. Cool G. Yeah, right. it's time for the OG, baby. Oh, man. this is I, I knew this was going to be a tough one, man. When you <laughs> Matter of fact, when you first drafted him, I knew. I knew. I was like, man. This is going to be one tough. Of them OGs, man, who ain't never let his skill slack. OG. You know what I'm saying? OG even meaning old goat. He's one of the goats. So it's going to be Dude. tough, but we'll see what you guys pick, man. It's a shame, man. huh? Yeah. He's one of the ones that's, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. All right. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Wow. Just talk for a minute, man. Right, what, 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 are we, what are we doing here, man? What's happening right now, bro? Talk to me, man. Bro, this song is so smooth. Uh, and I'm talking about super smooth, bro. Oh, my man, god. Man, this is, this, is this is what happens when you start messing with these OGs, man. We take y'all on, a, we take y'all on a, a time trip to show you what this was like back then. Listen, this is old. This is old, old. Let me tell he you, he was spitting go, like that back then. Wow. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go you, ahead, you go dead ahead. right, bro. And and <laughs> uh, and to piggyback off of that, let's just say this: the amount of skill that was used before I even go into you know what beat did it fall on? What was the secondary rhymes? Uh, breath control, difficulty, all of that is there. But let's just talk about how how much skill that is that it actually influenced every single rapper that you listen to right now that you think is dope. <laughs> yes. He had so many different styles and just lines. As a matter of fact, I would I would even say he doesn't pause enough because it keeps on going and his styles you don't know when it's changing or if it's the same or not. Like it does, he's just talk. It's like he's just talking to you, at, you know. But. If you listen to it, man, every single style that you enjoy, this dude mastered or invented. <laughs> All in the first verse, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> bro, we still got two minutes of this greatness. Oh, my God. And then, of course, she's going to get, you know, harmony and melody, or at least melody, with that singing in the, in the chorus. Let's go, man. Wow. That's tough. Man. That's that skill, the, man. Yes, sir. I mean, and he's really Oh man again with the similarities but different. He's sitting here telling you he's telling you a story about being a boss and what it took to get to that level. That's why it's a shame. That's what the hook is saying. It's a uh -huh. shame what I had to do to make a dollar you know yes. what i'm saying like the options that was given to me it's a shame that's why in the video you see certain parts of him stressing out when he shaking falls up head. against the mirror shaking his head looking at in the room with the other bosses is looking at what they talking about like man this is bullshit that's what that's what he's saying to himself like we shouldn't even really be doing this this is bs that we gotta 
and make a way this way. And that is just in case you thought he was glorifying it because he's so good at talking about it. In case you thought he right. was glorifying it, that's not what's happening. He throws that yep. in to let you know this is a shame. But now guess what? Since you're Gary anyway, I was going to bring this up. Mick Jenkins says he'd rather hang in the gallows than do this stuff for the love of money. And the flip side of the coin is it's a shame that I have to do this for the love of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we so sad. It's the same, but it's so different. Two I tell sides you what. of the exact same coin. It's the exact same mm-hmm. coin. It's just the other side of it. He's like, it's a shame I gotta do this. Mick Jackson said, yep. you don't have to. He said, I do. It's a shame that I have to do this. They just come from two different perspectives. Wow. And both of them exactly. are just as real and important to be spoken on. Exactly. Exactly, because there's a there's also the same imagery that you're seeing with Mick Jenkins' video where he said he's hanging, and he's hanging in there with his boys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's in a room hanging on for dear life while some of his boys are just hanging themselves. When you look at this video, every single person Cool G Rap got is black around him. Yeah. So he done employed all these black people. Even the room full of bosses, it was all black. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, there's st- it, man, I'm trying to tell you, this is crazy. All right, crazy. man, let's go. <laughs> Wait a minute, stop. Just what, real quick, bro. <laughs> we just talked about how he invented and mastered every style in the first verse. And then he chops just yep. for a second to let you know, yes, I do that too. I'm done. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Let's go. See how the... Chick he was just rapping about looks like a dope fiend mm-hmm. across the table. Yeah. Having them having them the nightmares, man. Them that conscience playing with them. Yeah, conscience is playing with them. So now when we talk about when we I mean when we go into the content of cultural significance, you you're gonna you have to say you have to, the perspective is all that matters. Cause yeah, he's talking about uh Sex and girls, and and how much champagne, and this and that. But it becomes a reason now. Like it's from a different context. It's not just talking yeah. about it for the sake of it. So now it becomes culturally important, and um, now it becomes a story worth telling. Not not right. just not just a you know he's entertainment. Not, yeah, he's he's not putting it like you know I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that. He's saying what he does and. He's do what he does brings him the things that he he has, but it's still a shame that he has to do it to achieve this to achieve the things that he has, achieve the the champagne and the women and things like that. That's why he's saying the girl that he's with, yeah, she's fine, she's all that, but she's still she's still a shooter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she's one of those, and that's why he's seeing the. The reflection of the dope fiend in her face while she's sitting at the table. Mm. You know what I mean? Right, All right. that context is there for you to know. But that, now like, let's man. let's remember that goes to video. Uh, oh yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, but not necessarily culturally significant content of the rap. I think Mick Jenkins no. is gonna pull that out just because he just he just did it right. He does. He's uh, although we see the the cultural content that Cool G Rap is talking about because of the perspective he's given. Right. Mick Jenkins is still uh, still bringing up more of those things. Like he's, he ends up you end up talking about the champagne and the girls and the money a little bit too much to say that you're more significantly <laughs> you know what I mean? Impacting a right. culture. Uh than everything that Mick Jenkins, especially with his visuals and and the whole what he's really talking about, the whole um, 
the whole drill the whole drill culture at, at that time in Chicago was still going on really uh, man it's gonna be tough but that skill let's just be honest I think we all know we all heard that man like let's just be honest bro we're talking about cool G rap the skill is just better bro I, I'm, I, 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 I can admit that but we got other things we can win with bro yeah yeah I think it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna be good with the video that might be a good one Cause while McJenkins did have, you know, he's portraying what's, what happened with the drill music, with the drill trap mm -hmm. in Chicago, it's still kind of a linear video with just him and them guys. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we still have that. Uh, we know where skill went. We pretty much can say where cultural content went. Uh, what else we got, man? We got influence, which we know uh, oh, we know where that's going. No, no, let's, <laughs> let's not let's not trip. We're not downplaying McJenkins at 2016, all. 2016 drill but, music was Chief Keith was it only 2016, 17. Like he what he was influencing and talking about then was really good. But yeah, we're talking about cool G rap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what y'all gotta understand is when we say that, we still it's a bunch we're just of saying like we're talking about not we know, just the person, but the song, his influence, right. his style. We just talked about one verse has influenced thousands of rappers. That one verse, if you just say his name's not Cool G Rap, and you heard that verse that was just kicked in 1990 something, you would be like, yeah. yo. This dude has influenced in the entire rap culture with this one verse. If that's all you heard and you didn't know his name. Oh my goodness. Come on, bro. Dude. I don't so, know. But man. you all you always gotta remember, even if there's something where we can say like, man, cultural content goes so so. Once we actually start breaking and busting down the bars, right, right. You know, the person may get close. You and know what I'm saying? Them points may go up. So that's how I mean, y'all saw it with ISO and Styles P, how close that was. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we didn't know That's it was going to be that down. close right after the head to head. Yeah. We started, after we nah. do the research and breakdown and come back the next day, do that winter video. You never know, people. So listen. Something between the beginning of both these videos here. So that's how you get that that's that right there is the intro to this video uh -huh. coming in with that sample right there so yeah i got you you see what i'm saying see how they mix mix the hay in with the actual video yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah yeah that, that. They got to start with the sample that describes the song immediately. Big, yes, both of them. And that, that right there, to me, that's what I mean. Similar, different, but so similar. And that's what's uh, crazy, prove, so crazy what we, about what we, this battle. What we continuously prove is that uh, there's similarities with all music. And so yes. if you think this one isn't good, but that one is, we're here to tell you that you probably just haven't looked at it deeply enough. Bingo. <laughs> this, is what, this is one of the main things about this rap battle right here that's what that was the main goal is to show people when you start breaking this music down how similar some of this music so so much is you know what i'm saying yeah so similar so way so many different ways all right well guys um that's it mm. for your boy here uh y'all be looking forward to that winner's video all right i think it's gonna be another close one Bruce? yeah i think so um i will uh I will be in touch, buddy. This is this is gonna be crazy. We're gonna put our we're gonna put our heads together. We're gonna put our our pen to paper. We're gonna get these points out to you. Be watching closely for the winner video. Also, you can go to Patreon to see this full video without all the stuff that YouTube has blocked. So remember, <laughs> that's where you gotta go for it, man. Um, what you gotta say, bro? Oh, always go to Patreon for all G's react. Uh, tell them your Patreon page because you got to go there to see the stuff that they block on his channel. That's right. Head over to All G's React at the Patreon. 
and there you'll find all blocked reactions from music videos to anime and to even TV shows and movies coming soon. Fire. With that being said, people, I'm out. I'm Nixon. Peace. Do it.